Hey, do you like Stable Diffusion and Automatic 1111? Well, I'm gonna show you how to install Forge, which promises to be better, faster, stronger. And to be honest, well, it kinda is, but don't tell anyone. Oh, and what do you call a knight that likes to scare people? Surprise. So this is Forge for Stable Diffusion. You might be saying, well, wait a minute, Seb, this isn't Forge, this is just Automatic 11.11. Well, it may look like that because it is built upon Automatic 11.11. However, it is just faster, better, stronger. I'm now running a generation here, cat in a hat with an Excel model. I'm using my cinematic styles. If you want these, they're available in my Patreon, as well as a text and image guide. You can use this video to get started, but if you want to delve much more in detail, check out my Patreon where I have more guides on that. However, let's quickly look at what's going on here. So at first glance, it basically looks like automatic 11.11. You have your models, you have your VE up here, you have a clip skip and, and all the usual tabs. What you don't have in automatic 11 or at least uh, pre-installed is you have a couple of extra tabs here. For example, you have SVD, which is stable video diffusion, and this is not even available in automatic 11.11. And if you checked my previous videos on Comfy, you might, might know that this is an image to video workflow. So if I drop in something here and I have a SVD model, you can basically start a quick generations with default values and you're gonna be able to do stable video diffusion in an interface that is not comfy and, and that is kind of nice. Now this is just a six frames per second generation. So it's uh, it's not super smooth, but it's just so quick and easy to get something done. And if you want smoother, just change the frames here. But this is not what this video is about. I'm gonna later on, I'm gonna show you how to install all this. I'm gonna do it in two steps, or rather I'm gonna show you two steps, the easy version and a little more advanced version if you're having trouble. What you do have is Control it, you have pre-installed, you have multiple control it units. You also have stuff like PhotoMaker already installed inside of Forge. Now you do need to download your models. So you're gonna need specific control it models. Those go in the models control it folder. So that's a little bit different from Stable Diffusion. Again, you wanna di dive deep, find my text guide. And one very cool feature about this is that if you load an image into here, you actually have a mask so you can either draw something like this say you just want to use this area so you could use it like this you can also use a separate mask and draw it like this and this mask is based on the size up here so if you change this and re-click this you're gonna get a different sized mask so that's a cool way of easily masking control nets and, and just this feature amazing and if we, for example we enable canny here and if you're familiar with Canny, you know that everything in the image turns into little lines. So let's say that we don't want the little blobs here on the right, and we generate something that, uh, well, let's resemble the, the size here. I'm gonna, just gonna do roughly like this. we will do Ninja Man. So now it's just gonna take the left part here and give us an output. So this part has been control net, and this part is, is not. So this can be, well, basically anything. Now it's obviously gonna match the rest of the, the image, so we still have some blur and bokeh and stuff going on, but it, it's not the same as uh, what's happened down here. So that's a really fantastic feature. I love that. Now, if you do check the GitHub page for Forge, you can see there's some information here. And the most important information, uh, or, or what I'm gonna t tell you right now, is that it's faster. If you're using a, a GPU with like eight gigs of VRAM, you can expect to get about 30 to 45% speed up in inference speed. Uh, which is kind of good. And if you use a less powerful GPU, like 6 gig of VRAM, you can expect to get about 60 to 75% extra speed. And that is quite massive. Now for my card here, the 4090, you're just uh, expecting to get about 3 to 6% speed. So I'm the real sucker here. Uh, you guys who bought the 6 gigs, gig cards, you're the real winners. Kudos to you guys. You're also saving a lot of money that you can buy lots of cool stuff with. And it says if you're using control net for uh, STXL here in this example, the maximum control net unit will increase by two times before you go out of memory. So not only will you speed up stuff using Forge, you will actually be able to do high resolution stuff, more advanced stuff. So what's not love? Now let's look at how to install Forge. We're gonna do it two ways. The first way I'm gonna show you is this one, which is the click here to download one click package. And the other one is we're gonna install Git, Python, and clone the repo. And, and you might be asking why, why don't we only use the one click package? 
Well, if it works for you, that's great, fantastic, go for it. It doesn't work for everyone, and in, if that's the case, I recommend installing Git and Python on your computer, because running this, the one-click package, it will not install Python on your machine, it will just run it in a little mini environment. So you're gonna click to download this. That'll get you a 7-zip file that looks like this. I recommend downloading 7-zip. If you don't have that, then you can basically 7-zip extract to WebUI Forge. Then you're gonna get a folder that looks like this. Go into that and you're gonna first, this is very important, you first need to click the update because the zip that you might have might not be updated. Now this one was, so it says already up to date, press any key to continue. This might change for you, there might be a lot of stuff going on and then it might say press any key to continue. Once you've done that you're gonna click this, run, and this is gonna start your forge for stable diffusion. Now this might take some time, it's gonna download some stuff, but once that is finished you're gonna have this screen launched for you in your browser and you're gonna be ready to run. Super easy, if you're encountering issues or you're gonna install it properly, let me show you the other way. So first we're gonna download Git. All these links are gonna be both in the description below and in my Patreon text guide. Choose your version, Mac, OS, Linux or Windows here. I'm gonna show the Windows. I'm gonna use the standalone installer, 64-bit for Windows. I'm also gonna go to the Python page here. We're gonna go to downloads up here, Windows, and then we're not gonna select the latest one here. We're gonna check view the full list of downloads and we're gonna find Python 3.10. So we can scroll down here. So I'm gonna select 3.10.6, which is a good version here. So Stable Diffusion does not work with Python 3.11, 12, and, and 13. So we need the Python 3.10. I'm gonna download that, scroll down, find the Windows installer, 64-bit, and download that. Go into your downloads folder, find the git here, double click that. We're gonna press next here. We're just gonna leave everything default for now. Next, next, just leave everything default for the git one and we're just pressing next all the way through. For the Python install we're gonna need some changes but git just click next, don't even worry about it. We're not gonna check the release notes so we're just gonna finish. Then we're gonna start our Python file here. Now bear in mind you have to click this button here. Remember click that button there, don't forget it. And then press install now. Now when you're trying to launch Stable Diffusion uh, Forge and if you're getting Python errors uh, some people need to actually download Python from the Microsoft Store, Windows Store. Um, so if Python isn't working for you, if you get Python errors, download it from the Windows Store or the Microsoft Store, I don't remember the name. Once that's finished you're gonna head back into the GitHub link and you're gonna find this here which is a URL that ends with git. Then you're going to start a command window. I'm just going to create a directory named forge here and go into that. First I did make directory forge, then I make change directory forge. You don't need to do this, but I need to do this because I already had a previously forge installed in, in that folder. And then I'm going to type git clone and then I'm going to copy paste the URL that we took from the site. Now all the files are going to be copied to your computer. And this is going to be similar to what you did when you, if you downloaded the 7-zip. However, now we're doing it, well, properly. Now, you have two ways of starting it. If you like using the terminal, you can go in change directory, stable diffusion, web UI forge, and then you can find the web UI user that and start that. You can also go into the directory and find the web UI user that and double click it from here. Now, if you are on Mac or Linux, you're gonna wanna open the webui.sh, which is not the webuiuser.sh. Now we're gonna have some files installed and collected here. So this is gonna be a couple of minutes, just wait for this. And once this has finished, you're gonna be able to uh, run Forge and it will actually auto launch in the same way that it did for the one click installer. Now, if you're not a new user and you've been around for some time, maybe you're launching Automatic 11.11 and you might be asking, well, Seb, why didn't we go into the web UI user file and add a lot of arguments to uh, customize Forge? Well, the thing is, with Forge, 
you don't need those arguments and they actually don't work. All the med VRAM, low VRAM, etc. have been removed from Forge and it is automatically detecting what GPU have and well adapting to your computer specs. So no need to worry about any of that. Just start it, don't think about it. Everything has now finished and again this has auto launched and we are now inside Forge. Now if this is a fresh install you will only have one model here. If you want to install a specific model to generate from go into a site like Civitai, download the model that you want, go into your Forge folder, the models and Stable Fusion and drop your model in here. If you're downloading a LoRa, it goes into the LoRa folder. The control net models are not going to be installed, so you have the preprocessors available, but no models. Let me quickly show you how to get these installed. Again, these links are available in the description and the text guide. You're going to have this link for control net models for Stable Fusion 1.5 models, and you're going to have this link for control net models for Stable Diffusion XL. Uh, so pick the ones that you want. You're going to download the PTH here. Then you go into your Forge directory. You're going to find models and, and then control net. And then you're just going to plop them in here. Once you do have them installed, you're going to see them available here. And they are going to be shown based on the model that you have selected up here. So you have a 1.5 model, which I have currently. You're going to see the 1.5 models. If I select an SDXL model and click here, first I'm not going to see that, I'm going to see the 1.5 ones. Just make sure that you click uh, refresh here, then I can also see the, the Excel models here available. They're also going to be automatically selected if I click one of the control types here. So that's how you get Forge for Stable Fusion installed. Then just prompt what you want to see, monkey in a jungle, select the style if you have those, select the size of your image how many images you want and press generate and you're going to be well on your way of using Forge. Thanks for watching. Check out the, this video in well over that corner. As always, have a good one. See ya.